Velkommen til et nytt program her på Israel-kanalen. I dette programmet så skal vi møte Daniel Ellinson, som er leder for Esra World Youth Movement, og vi befinner oss her på Herzelfjellet i utenfor Jerusalem. Uh, welcome to the Israel-kanal, Danny. Thank you very much. I think it's so freezing cold outside. Shall yes. we go inside and make the interview inside? Yes, yes, yes. it's okay. really very freezing. Let's do that. Danny, please tell me a little bit more about uh, Ezra Youth Movement and, and the purpose of that organization. Yes. Uh, the Ezra Youth Movement today, we have uh, more than 23,000 members in Ezra worldwide. United States, in Russia, but also Ukraine, in Germany. And the idea of, uh, of Ezra is to bring the Jewish people back home back to Israel. You know, you just uh, visit right now around the 100 people that we brought from Russia and Ukraine. This is their first visit in the state of Israel. They never been here and they don't know anything about what's happening here. So basically what we are doing, we are bringing these people to Israel to show them as well, to connect them to this land, to connect them to this country. And after this time, after uh, 10 days that they are here in Israel, they feel more connect to Judaism, to Israel, to Zionism, to us, to Ezra. When they're coming back, we are taking them into our communities and we offer them around 24 different activities in order that they're going to find themselves in, in Ezra. And the idea of these uh, activities in the end of the day is we are making a follow-up of what they saw here in Israel and we're trying to connect them more to Israel in order that in the end of the day, in the end of the process, they're going to come here and to live here in this country. And to make Aliyah. And to make Aliyah. This is this is uh, the idea, to, to come here and to live here, this is the meaning of making Aliyah to Israel. You know, I just told them that uh, from Russia in the, in the last uh, 17 years, uh, about one and a half million people came from Russia to Israel. And they support Israel very much. And this is, this is something that Israel needs. They, they support Israel, they make the economic of Israel to rise up. And uh, in the end of the day, we want to see all the Jewish people around the world coming here to the state of, to the state of Israel and to live here. Why don't we take a look at uh, your speech there in front of the Herzl grave? So, for those who can see it, so follow me on that. My name is Daniel Inson. I am the Director General of Ezra Worldwide. I am Director of Ezra. First of all, how are you? How are everything so far? Everything so, everything is okay? Great. Who is from Russia? Who is from Who is from Ukraine? Very nice, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and from Belarus also? No. Moldova. Who is from Moldova? Uh, after talking to these uh, young people coming here to, uh, to uh, Israel for the first time, what do you feel doing that? You know, every time uh, that uh, I'm speaking with, uh, with those people, I feel is that we are making a change. We are making a huge change in the in the Jewish community. In the in the, we are making history. In the end of the day, uh, because you know that we are today uh, in a very special moment, in a very special time. That we need to understand that after two thousand years, that the Jewish people 
basically sit abroad. And uh, you know, these people came, uh, are coming to, he to here, to Mount Herzl, after the visit in Yad Vashem, after the visit in the Holocaust Museum. That the, when we're speaking about the Holocaust, it was right, you know, a few years before the State of Israel established. And basically the Holocaust was the end of the period that the Jewish people live abroad. I think that I may say that the Holocaust, although that it was really terrible, terrible situation, you know, that six million Jewish people died. Uh, but if we see the world picture, we see the hand of God that push the Jewish people to come here to Israel after 2,000 years that they sit in a brood. And, uh, and today that uh, you see all the miracles that uh, Israel, Israel face. We spoke right now with, uh, uh, with the people that we just brought them from Russia about the Six Day War. How in six days we succeed to win such a lot of Arabic country, very strong one. And this is a miracle. And we see this miracle, you know, every day. Um, and uh, this is very nice, you know, we, uh, when I begin the Ezra, when I start Ezra about um, 18 years ago, it was a very small, you know, very small organization with around 400, 500 uh, kids. And today to see this organization with 23,000 participants around the world, with bringing to Israel more than 20,000 people to visit here, and with bringing more than 7,000 people to come and live here in this country. So 7,000 people out of those 23,000 people has actually, have actually made Aliyah. They made Aliyah. Yeah, that's wonderful. And, and, uh, and every time that you meet these people, you see this has a part of all the process. You know, sometimes when you are speaking with one person, so you say, okay, this is only one person. What is the big change? But when you look at the big picture, and the big picture is the last 18 years, 18 years, 18 years. when you see that in the end of the day, speaking with one person and another person and another group, and uh, so in the end of the day, you see 7,000 people coming and live in Israel. So then you understand that every moment that you spend with these people, this is a huge change that you are making in the Jewish history. So, um, the situation in, in, in uh, the eastern part of Europe, in Ukraine speci specifically, where you have this uh, situation with the war in the eastern part, uh, how has that affected your work? You know, uh, in Ukraine, uh, because, because of the war, we decided that uh, we need to change completely all the, all the process. If until now what we did is uh, to bring around 2,000 people to Israel and to connect them here in Israel to the state of Israel, to Judaism, to Zionism, to Ezra, and then they're coming back, make for them follow-up activities and then bring them back here. So we understood at this point that we need to do something different. And something different that we did, we decided to send a lot of representatives from the state of Israel in order to help these people. You know, people ran out of their home. They didn't have documents with nothing. So we had, first of all, to help them in the refugees camp, to give them food, to give them something to eat. And then immediately, because there was with no heat, with nothing, uh, so we had to make all the process of bringing them back here to Israel to do it very, very fast. So we had, you know, to invest a lot of money of bringing people to, to Ukraine to make these camps, uh, to make all the process 
in order to speed, speed them to come here to Israel. So if usually we used to bring around 100 people, 200 people to Israel, so at the time of the war in Ukraine, we brought more than 2,500 people to the, to the state of Israel. You need to understand, this is the whole idea of Ezra. You know, there is some organization that they are doing the routine things, yes? But there is some organization that they're looking where it needs to be help, where people need help, and then they change all the structure of the organization in order to make this happen and to help the people to come back to Israel. Uh, so how do you finance all your operations? So uh, what, uh, first of all, I can tell you that it's not so simple. Uh, sometimes we are doing and then we are thinking how we are going to get the sources. Uh, it's not simple, you know, when you see your brothers that need help, you don't think about how you are going to do it and who is going to give you the money in order to do this. The first thing that you are doing, you are going to help your brother. And then you are thinking how you are going to get the support uh, to do that. You know, we believe that uh, we are in a very special times. We are in special days that uh, we see millions and millions of Jewish people come back uh, to Israel. And we believe in God that this is the right things to do. So first of all, we are doing, and then we see that in the end of the day, God brings us the, the money to do these things. So in this case, for example, uh, after you know, we start to do these big things, so the state of Israel uh, saw what we are doing and they decided to, to support us. They saw that we are really doing something that, if not us, no one is going to do it. Um, they saw that uh, basically the country was really missing, Ukraine was really missing people uh, to give this support to the Jewish uh, people that uh, was living there. Uh, and when we saw that we are giving the solution, they decided also to help. But of course, um, it's, uh, it's never hand by, by this because uh, there is a huge demand all the time. Um, and we, as I told you, we, be, we build a big structure. Yes, we build a, a big calling center that located in Odessa with uh, 10 girls that uh, making a phone calls and uh, to support all those people that want to make Aliyah to Israel. We send all the representatives from Israel to help the Jewish people from Ukraine to come back to Israel. We had to build a, a big structures in the social media. We had to make a lot of seminars. This is a huge money. And of course, uh, this is something that we need. We need a huge help in order to, in the end of the day, to help these Jewish people to come back to Israel. Yeah. I understand that a lot of your work is also information. I mean, you have to spread the word that there is a trip to Israel and you got to get people to sign up for it. Uh, how how, uh, how um, difficult is it to get the attention of the young Jews living in different parts of the world? You know, I will tell you it's, uh, it's a difficult. You know, we, we, we took a group, a group of people, we took around 20 people to a room like this. And uh, people that to don't know anything about Israel. And we start to, to ask them questions about what do you think about going to France? All of them said, yes, France, this is a place to go. What do you think about going to Germany? Yes, Germany. What do you think about going to Norway? Yes, a good place. What do you think about going to Iran? No, 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 we don't want to go to Iran. What do you think about going to Israel? So I will tell you that the answer was to go to Israel, 
not at all. It was like to, for them to go to Iran or to Iraq because they don't have any knowledge about Israel. So they are thinking that Israel is a very, very dangerous place to go to. And they really don't want to go. And sometimes, you know, I have difficulties that I tell people, I want to bring, I want to bring you to Israel. And his parents, they called me and they told me, I'm going to pay my son, you know, that is not going to come uh, to the state of Israel. So it's not so easy. But, uh, you know, we have uh, the, the belief that this is the right things to do and we are succeeding to, to convince them to come. And thank God, because we brought such a lot of people, so uh, they also convinced their friends that this is the right things to do. They show them the pictures, they are speaking to them about their experience, and this, of course, help us to bring them also to the state of Israel. Some people think that taking, taking you know, uh, young people, uh, young adults, uh, teenagers from different countries to Israel is kind of luxury. What do you think about that? Is it luxury or is it information or work? This is, uh, I will tell you, we, we thought uh, very deeply about um, bringing the, you know, bring the young adults uh, to Israel. But basically, we thought before, about, we thought about what is the right way in order to teach these people about Israel. You know, we did many things. Usually in the past, what we did, we used to send a lot of representatives from the state of Israel to teach people about Israel. And you know, it, was, it took us a long, long, long time and many years in order for these young adults to understand what we are talking about. Yes? And it doesn't matter if these people was in one lecture or if they was in ten lectures, it's the same. In the end of the day, it's very difficult to learn about Israel if you are not in Israel. It's very difficult to learn about Judaism if you are not, if you don't come here. So we thought, what is the right way in order to teach them about, about Israel? So we made a research and, we, and uh, we come into conclusion that the right way to do it is by giving them some kind of experience. So we said, okay, which kind of experience we are going to give them? Are we going to, give, to take them to uh, Poland? Are, are we going to take them for a Jewish tour in the United States? What is the right things to do? So we decided that the really right things to do is to take them to the Jewish country. If you want to teach them about Judaism, if you want to teach them to, about Israel, we must bring them here. And, uh, and what we saw, uh, what we saw is that in these 10 days that they are coming here to the state of Israel and they touch this ground and th they see what is Judaism, they see what is Israel, they experience Israel. So these 10 days, it's equal to a 10 years of sending someone from Israel to teach these young people about Israel. So this is something that's, that is very important. We see how these 10 days influence them very, very much. They get to love this country. And after you see the passion about Israel, and after they're coming back, it's much more easy for you to continue and to make this follow up. So this is something that it's not maybe to do it. This is something that it's must done in order really to change their mind. So what is the goal for Ezra for this year, for 2017? So uh, this, our goal is, uh, of course, to continue bringing these people to Israel. We want to increase the numbers. Uh, we just finished 2016 with uh, 2,100 uh, people that we brought to Israel. 2,100? Yes. Okay. Uh, and we want to increase the number, not, not to double, of course we want to double the numbers, but it's difficult. Uh, but we want uh, to bring at least 2,300 people 
to Israel in 2000, 2017. And of, of course, we want to continue, you know, to bring in them uh, not only to visit Israel, but also to make them live here in this country. 2016, uh, we brought uh, 267 uh, people, Jewish people, to come here and live here in this country together with us. And we hope that at least this number is going to be also in 2017. Uh, of course, if it's going to be more, we are going to be very happy. You know, it uh, depends on the people, it depends on what they are doing. Uh, but we always looking and increasing the numbers. And of course, if, uh, if someone will ask us to come uh, again to help more in Russia, to help more in Ukraine, if we will see some uh, demand for helping, of course, this, we are fighters that know how to change everything and to go and help and bring in the Jewish people back home. Why do you think it's so important to bring the Jews from around the world back to Israel to live here? Yes. You know, um, Ezra, uh, the name of Ezra, it's uh, called than the prophet uh, Ezra, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, that uh, uh, in our Bible, yes, uh, 2,500 years ago, the first temple was destroyed and the Jewish people was taken from Israel to Iraq. And the people that brought them back from Iraq to Israel, it was Ezra and Nehemiah. That our organization is called under the name of Ezra. And then after that, uh, after five, uh, and then after 70 years, the second temple was established, but this also was destroyed 500 years after that by the Rome. And the Jewish people went to Rome and went to abroad for 2,000 years. And after the Holocaust, that we just spoke about it, we see that the Jewish people coming back home. Um, in 1951, uh, we saw a big operation from Iraq, and that this operation was called Ezra operation. Like Ezra that used to take the Jewish people from Iraq to Israel at the time of the Second Temple. So right now, the state of Israel brought the Jewish people from Iraq to Israel. And what we see, every year, every year we see different miracles. We're speaking about the war. We're speaking about, you know, the Jewish people that coming back from different countries. And every time you say to yourself, okay, probably it's going to finish. Probably, you know, there is not going to be more Jewish people that are going to come back to Israel. And then suddenly you see in 1990 that the gate in Russia was opened. And since then, one and a half million Jewish people came back to Israel. And then said, okay, this was, this is the end. Okay, the Russian people, the Belarusian people, Ukrainian people came back, great, and no more. And then suddenly you see that there is a crisis in the South America, and then the Jewish people are coming from South America to Israel. And then you are thinking, okay, no more Jewish people that are going to come. And then you see another miracle. You see a crisis in, in Europe, and you see, a, a lot of anti-Semitism cases in Europe that pushing the Jewish people to come from France, from Italy, to the state of Israel. And of course, you see every year that Jewish people are coming from United States uh, to Israel. And when you are looking at everything, and the big pictures, you know, the establishment of the state of Israel after 2000 years, you see all the miracles that we have that we are facing in the world here in Israel. You see, suddenly, all the Jewish people that come in from all around the world to the state of Israel, then you understand that there is someone behind it. And who is behind it? It's God. And what Yechezkel said, 
that there is going to be a days that the Jewish people are going to come back to Israel. This is the days. And who is going to take part in this process is going to get, is going to be blessed. Is going to be blessed by God. And I believe in this. And I want to be part of this process. I want to be part of the process of what God wants us to do. And I think that is, this is a very, very important days. And I'm very glad that I'm part of this process. Yes, amen to that. Uh, we also want to take part of that blessing. That's also a reason why we are supporting you, of course. Um, the time for this program has come to an end. Thank you very much, Danny, for your participation. Thank you for your support. And God bless you further in your work. Thank you very much. Da var dette programmet kommet til sin ende. Takk for at dere har fulgt oss der hjemme, og på gjensyn neste uke.